Hello everyone, and welcome to the third and final installment of making a green and white Rococo gown, also known as the butterfly dress. And if you missed the previous two videos about this project, they will be linked in the description box down below. In the previous two videos, I made the underskirt and the overskirt, and today I'll be making the bodice. I started by cutting the bodice out from four layers of cotton. Two of these layers will be used to back the fashion fabric, and the other two will be used as actual lining. I pinned the side and side back panels of lining together, as well as the two back panels. Then I ironed the upper half of the arm size slash strap on the front panels inward. This is done for setting the sleeve the historically accurate way later on. Now these pieces could be pinned to the side panels and everything got sewn together with half inch allowances. Once that was all stitched together, I set the lining aside and moved on to laying out the remaining cotton pieces I cut out earlier onto the fabric that will form the outer layer of the bodice, which is a silk taffeta. I'm pinning the cotton to the taffeta, then cutting around each piece. This is called flat lining, which is a process used to give fabric more structural integrity. And in this case, I thought it would help prevent puckering, which it didn't, really, really didn't, but I tried my best. Just for the sake of doing something different, instead of seaming the pieces together, I decided to try top stitching them together, which I've seen done on a few extant garments. To do this, I'm marking one inch away from half the edges of the panels, then using my iron to turn the raw edge inward until it touches that line and is neatly finished from the exterior. Then on the remaining panels, on the exterior of the fabric, I'm marking a line with chalk half an inch away from the edge. The folded edge of the matching piece is aligned with this marking and pinned in place. This was repeated until all the panels were pinned together. Now with teeny tiny running stitches, I'm securing the pieces together as close to the folded edges as I can, and each stitch goes through all the layers of the fabric so it's nice and secure. Now I'm marking a line on the interior of the bodice, one inch away from the edges. This marking goes around the entire neckline, front and bottom edge of the bodice. I clip the curved edges of the bodice, then begin folding all the edges inward so they touch the line I marked. I repeated this process for the lining off camera, however instead of pinning the edges down, I ironed them, with formed enough of a crease that the pins weren't necessary. Then I laid the lining on top of the interior of the bodice with the wrong sides facing each other and began pinning it in place so all the folded edges lined up. The lining was completely sewn in by hand using slip stitches, and in case you hadn't noticed, the only edges I didn't turn inward are around the arm side and the top of the strap. Those are left free for sleeve setting later on. Now I sewed boning channels into the front edges of the bodice by machine, and I lost the footage but I added a single plastic bone to either side of the bodice. I think I actually ended up adding two pieces of boning to the back of the bodice as well, but I'm not sure where that footage went either. Then I began sewing enclosures, and for this I'm using hook and eye tape which ensures that the hooks and eyes are evenly spaced. The plan was for the bodice to hook closed at the center front. However, somewhere along the way, the bodice became an inch and a half too small, and there wasn't nearly enough seam allowance to let it out. It was also gaping at the neckline, and just a real mess, if I'm being honest. Luckily, the gaping could be fixed with a few darts that will be covered by trim later on. But the inch and a half opening at the front, that was harder to fix, so I decided to make an emergency stomacher. This is a rectangular piece of taffeta with a pointed front. The stomacher is lightly boned to keep it smooth, and I re-sewed the eyelet tape onto one edge of the stomacher, then sewed hook tape to the coordinating side of the bodice. To cover up the majority of the hook tape, I sewed organza ruffles on top, then I sewed the edge of the stomacher that didn't have hook tape onto what was supposed to be the center front of the bodice. I realize it's confusing, and I apologize for that. At this point, I didn't have any more fabric and was in frantic, do what you can to fix it mode that definitely didn't involve picking up a camera. Anyway, with the crisis averted, I clipped into the seam allowance of the arm side, then folded the upper portion inward by a half inch, just like I did with the lining earlier. I also folded the top edge of the strap inward by a half inch and ironed it down. 
Then I made a bunch of pink bows and sewed those to the bodice, but we should really just ignore this footage because they were removed five minutes later. However, at this point I also sewed the straps to the back of the bodice, which didn't get ripped out at all. Unlike the bows, which went straight into the trash. I liked how they looked on the bodice, but I did think they looked a little bit childish. I didn't want to incorporate bows into the skirt, and I couldn't just have them on the bodice, so off they came. And onto the sleeves I moved. These were self-drafted, just like the rest of the costume, and cut from the silk taffeta and a lightweight cotton. Said lightweight cotton was pinned onto the sleeves at the bottom edge with the right sides facing each other. Then they were sewn together with a half inch allowance. I ironed the seam flat, then folded the lining so the edges were even with the taffeta layer. Now I pinned and sewed the side seams, and I stitched these with French seams, so I sewed them with the wrong sides facing each other, then trimmed the seam allowance down and sewed them again with the right sides facing each other, so the raw edges were neatly tucked away. And now it was time to make the sleeve ruffles, which are obviously the most important part. Ruffles are always the most important part. There will be a few layers of ruffles on the sleeves, but the first is made out of an embroidered butterfly mesh. I cut two even strips of this material and didn't have to worry about hemming it since the mesh doesn't fray. Then I cut two strips of striped organza to be slightly longer than the mesh, and this does fray. Oh boy, does it ever fray! So it was cut out with pinking shears to prevent some of that. Then I laid the butterfly material on top of the organza so the top edges were even. I took that over to my sewing machine and started gathering the layers together until the strip was almost a quarter of its original length. We are making some hardcore, dense ruffles over here. Once the ruffles were gathered to the right length, I sewed up the two ends with the right sides facing each other. I trimmed off the excess seam allowance so it would look a bit cleaner from the interior. Despite all of this, I didn't think it was roughly enough, so I ended up sewing a narrow ruffle I had left over from the skirt on top. Then I pinned my ruffles onto the hems of the sleeves. And since at this point I couldn't fit it under my sewing machine, I stitched the ruffles on by hand. To mimic the detailing on the skirt, I pinned puff trim on top of the narrow ruffle, and if you're wondering how to make puff trim, check out the second video in this series. I go into it in great detail. And just like in the previous video, this trim was sewn up by hand with tacking stitches at the widest part of each puff. Then the centers were secured with six 4mm fake pearls. And to finish the sleeves off, a butterfly was glued to each one. Now the bodice was looking pretty bland by comparison, so it obviously needed some ruffles too. That is my entire design technique, just adding ruffles. <laughs> For these specific ruffles, I cut out two widths of organza using pinking shears. Then I stacked the layers and gathered them simultaneously. And this was pinned around the neckline of the bodice, then sewn on by machine. Just like with the sleeves, I pinned puff trim over the center of the ruffles, then stitched them down by hand with pearls covering the gathers of each puff. Now the sleeves could be sewn on. The bottom half was sewn on by machine, and the upper part was tucked between the folded edges of the lining and outer layer of fabric. I did this while the bodice was on a dress form so I could perfect, or at least try to perfect, the fit over the shoulders. This part of the sleeve was sewn on by hand using tiny slip stitches, though mine were admittedly not the prettiest since I knew ruffles would cover them. That is the downside of ruffles, they cover things, and I know they cover things, and sometimes that makes me lazy. The finishing touch for the bodice were butterflies, and just like with the skirt, these were all glued on using E6000. And I glued them instead of sewing them since they are made out of styrofoam and not very stitchable. 
I had to add quite a lot of these to cover the boning channels I sewed into the bodice earlier on, as well as the seam between the stomacher and the bodice. And I kind of hate how it turned out, to be honest. I think it looks really messy, but I couldn't really turn back at this point. So lastly, the skirt was sewn on, and this was kind of hellish. Taffeta is so dense and difficult to stitch through. It's not so bad with the single layer, but for this I kept breaking needles from forcing it through the fabric. And I was about ready to throw this across the room, and very, very grateful that this was the last step since I felt pretty done with this project by this point. And now I feel less anger towards it, but my thoughts are definitely mixed. I love, and I do mean love, how the skirt turned out for this project and how the materials work together, but the bodice and sleeves are too tight and I think the butterflies take away from it more than they add to it. I blame the fit of this on the fabric. I mean, obviously it's my fault, but I forgot how little give Tafta has, and flatlining it only intensified that, making the finished garment fit drastically different and much smaller than my mock-up. Going on medication that made me gain 10 pounds between starting and finishing this project probably didn't help either. Overall, it's kind of a disappointing end to a project I was really excited about, but that's the way it goes sometimes, and hopefully you still enjoyed seeing how it came together. If you did, giving this video a like and a comment really helps me out, and if you'd like to see other, better fitting 18th century costumes, stay tuned because I have another one coming up soon. Thanks again for watching, and I will talk to all of you very soon.